Everyone's a pundit nowadays. No matter where you go, you'll find someone spouting an opinion about your team. Whether it's Big Ronnie down the social club explaining why the manager is getting his tactics all wrong, or an ex-player who made one appearance for the club questioning whether the current crop are good enough to wear the shirt, or us here on YouTube providing well-balanced and thought-provoking analysis. Either way, there are pundits everywhere, with so many ex-players moving into the media. While there are some excellent pundits out there who really hit the nail on the head, there are some that don't, so let's take a look at the 6 worst pundits around right now. In 6th place is Robbie Savage. You know this list is going to be rough when Robbie Savage doesn't even make the top 3. Since 2010, Savage has been almost a permanent fixture either on our tellies or on our radios, despite doing nothing really of note during his career, other than pick up a million yellow cards. Oh, and there was that famous Worthington's Cup win, which didn't look great when he was sat alongside Clarence Seedorf and Thierry Henry. In fairness to Savage, he doesn't seem to be as bad as he used to be, and a 6 or 6 show can be entertaining, but my word does the Welsh man love an argument. Sensational for being the sake of sensational, Savage won't sit on the fence, in fact he'll flip and flap between both sides, confusing you to the point of submission. The former midfielder seems to be controversial just for the sake of it, otherwise he'd be given the same treatment as Kevin Kilban. That means sporadic match of the day 2 appearances when none of the games please the eye. In 5th place is Martin Keown. Considering the size of Martin Keown, I would never say this to his face, as he'd probably rip my ears off before telling me to listen, but however, there can't be many people out there who love listening to the soothing tones of Martin Keown after the football. While he may have been an absolute legend at Arsenal, surely he doesn't have to turn every conversation into something about the Gunners. No matter which club or player is being debated, Keon's final play will always be something totally unrelated to the question and more about Arsenal. The man's like a politician the way he dodges questions. Only once called a step over or a leg over. Just let that sink in. In fourth place is Michael Owen. We could spend all day just reliving the stupid things Michael Owen has said whilst on live television, so let's take a look at just a few. You need people who score goals, that's how you win games. No shit Michael. That would have been a goal had it gone inside the post. An incredible insight into how the art of scoring a goal works from Michael. This is turning into a rout, as Chelsea scored their 6th goal past Arsenal. You reckon Michael? Bold claim. Wenger will be quite happy Arsenal haven't conceded. Only quite happy though. I love these players with two feet, as opposed to the amputees we often see running around. And finally, Memphis looks like a footballer. That's professional footballer and Dutch international Memphis Depay, who had previously been in doubt as to whether or not he is in fact a footballer. Beyond words. In third place is Paul Merson. One of Soccer Saturday's golden boys, Paul Merson is wheeled out every Saturday afternoon on every other channel Sky Sports has to offer, and every week the former gunner makes comical errors. Here at HITC Sport, if we mispronounce the name of some player from the Turkish 2nd Division, we get an absolute hammering in the comments. Yet apparently it's hilarious when Paul Merson does it on a much grander stage for much more money. Any foreign player who arrives in the Premier League should be braced for Merson to get their name wrong, and if this wasn't Brexit enough, you'll also hear him banging the British managers don't get a chance drum, slamming foreign managers such as Marco Silva despite lauding the arrivals of David Moyes and Roy Hodgson, or various other washed up managers who are the ones actually blocking young Brits getting a chance. In second place is Garth Crooks. Never has one man had so much problem with hair. Sure we'll have the occasional pop at Paul Pogba for his erratic barnet, but it's all in jest, we're just having a bit of fun, especially coming from a ginger like myself, but Garth Crooks actually seems offended by some players' hairdos, or hair don'ts in this case. I'll see myself out. Anyway, Garth Crooks seems to fucking hate Paul Pogba and Chelsea's back at Yoko, lambasting both their seasons for dyeing their hair, whilst describing Fernandinho as a model professional, no flashy haircuts and certainly no dye in his hair. So there you have it, that's why Man City are top of the league, because Fernandinho shaves his head. Garth Crooks' team of the week is absolutely comical and sometimes looks like he hasn't actually watched any football that weekend. And when he's on BBC's final score, Crooks seems to spend every possible minute shouting aggressively at whoever the host is about something totally irrelevant. Poor Jason Mohammed. And in first place is Chris Sutton. Once upon a time, Chris Sutton did the occasional bit of punditry, not really saying too much out of the blue, towing the line without really turning any heads. But then something changed. 
Sutton seemed to have watched Robbie Savage's DVD on how to be a good pundit, and then the former striker started to just be as controversial as possible, no matter how ridiculous the argument. Be it on BT Sports or Match of the Day, you can often find Chris Sutton arguing a point that even he clearly doesn't believe, constantly repeating himself because he doesn't have a complex argument, slurring his words like your drunk uncle at a wedding. So those are our 6 worst football pundits around today, let us know yours in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.